and welcome to How to Model a Name Badge in Tinkercad uh, on behalf of the staff at Studio 300 and the Fountaindale Public Library District. Uh, welcome to this virtual online class. Uh, my name is Monica. I'll be taking you through the basic uh, setup um, for how to do this project in Tinkercad, which is a free online software that you can access from home through your web browser. Uh, and it will show you the basic steps of how to use Tinkercad and model a, a simple object so that you can make your own models to 3D print with the 3D printers in the studio. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So in order to access Tinkercad, you just need to open up any web browser like Google Chrome and type in Tinkercad. Com, and it should take you right to the main page. Um, you may have to open up, and when you log in, you may have to uh, create your own account, which is simple enough. If you just hit personal accounts, you can make one with a Google account or an Apple account or with an email address. I'm just going to sign in with my Google account and the site will take you to your account with your own design page. Uh, by the end of this class, hopefully, we will be creating we will be creating something like this, uh, which is just a flat object with text and an icon um, that you can print out using a 3D printer. Uh, you see there's some dimension to it here, uh, but this is the end goal for the course, and I will take you step by step through that. If at any point I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and rewind to uh, watch steps over again. If you are unfamiliar with any sort of 3D modeling program, CAD program at all, and you've never navigated in one before, I will do my best to link uh, or to show shortcuts in the bottom corner of the screen um, so that you know what shortcuts to hit and I will do my best to uh, say what I'm doing as I go through the course. But uh, the best way to learn how to navigate Tinkercad is to go to the home page by clicking this icon. And under resources, there are learning centers, um, lesson plans with different projects. Uh, but the best way to get started is to hit the learning center tab and go through the tutorials that are uh, kind of going in order in place. Um, let me see if I hit view all. These tutorials are really short and really simple, and they take you step by step through how to do everything in Tinkercad. Um, but if you need a refresher or need help navigating, like I said before, that is just click the icon on any of the Tinkercad pages, go to resources, and hit learning center, and it will take you there. Um, all right, so let's get started with our own project. I'm going to go back to my profile page um, and create a new project by hitting new, this blue button, and 3D design. Okay, the first thing you're going to see uh, when you open up a new project is the work plane, which is the standard um, uh, work plane that you're going to put shapes on. You can also change this name and change the name of your project. I'm going to change it to name badge. And I'm going to start by dragging the first shape. So over on the right hand side of the screen, you will see these different shapes that you can use as building blocks to start building your 3D design. If the shape is transparent like this one it is actually not a solid shape this is a hole that you can put in solid shapes um, and it uses this 
gray transparent layer to show you that um, it is a vacant space um, in whatever shape you want. If I change the color of it, it becomes solid. Uh, but I'm going to delete this for right now so that we can start with a new shape. And I'm going to select this box and place it in the middle of our work plane. Um, when you place a new shape, there will be different corner um, toggles that let you scale up and scale down along with a toggle for how uh, high or deep um, one of these shapes are. And if you ever forget what each one does, you can just hover over it and it will tell you the measurements um, for this shape. I think right now we are in uh, inches and you can change the settings for the work plane down here. If you hit settings, I have it set to inches instead of metric. Um, and that's really all we need. So you can either use these toggles to make things taller, scale them up in size, um, or make them wider or skinnier. Um, but if you wanted to get real specific with your measurements, um, you can toggle or uh, change your view so that you're looking at the top of your shape. And the way that I did that is if I go back, if you hold down um, your left or if you hold if you hold down your right uh, mouse key, click and hold and then drag your view, it will let you um, view your shape from any angle. This is really important to do as you're working so that you can make sure that not only does the top look right, but also the sides and back look right. Um, and if you want to really quickly get to a certain side, there is this cube in the front um, top left corner um, that's labeled things like top, front, and if you click on any one of these spots, it will immediately show you that side and you can use this to turn around. Or you can click on like a corner for an angled view of your shape. If you're ever confused about what side you're looking at, just refu uh, refer back to this cube in the corner here. Um, and if you wanna zoom in and out of your view, I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom out and zoom back in. So that's basically it when it comes to like navigating your view. If I wanna move something around, you can just click on your shape and move it with your mouse. All right, so to start with, we are going to uh, resize the height and uh, or the length and width of this uh, rectangle. So if I click on here, it shows me that I'm two inches by three inches. Um, I'm going to change that down to two by two and three quarters. Um, if you ever want to get real specific about um, your measurements, you can click on any of these numbers um, and just type in. So if I type in three, it will go back to three inches. If I need to change the height, I'm just going to change my view so that I can see a little bit easier and use this toggle to toggle down. Um, or you can type it in, like I said before. I think I'm gonna make this 0 0.5 inches. So it, or actually, let's do 0 0.5. And now I have this little rectangular prism in the center of the plate. This is gonna make up the outside of my badge, but I don't really like the super sharp corners. 
So what I'm going to do to round them off is click on this and you get a little properties box um, on the right side of your screen when you um, click on any shape. And I'm going to use the radius tool. Right now it's at zero, but I'm gonna use it to curve these down so that my box has some nice rounded corners. So right now I just have a flat uh, shape. And if you wanted to put your uh, text or sh um, icon on top of this shape, you could, but I want to create a little bit of an inset so there is a border around my badge. Um, so this is where using different hole shapes um, comes in handy. So we're gonna do the same thing, treat this like a shape, but we're gonna make it slightly smaller than um, the original box we were working with. So I'm gonna move this over to the side and now work with our transparent shape. And I'm wanting to make it a little bit thinner than my badge. Uh, gonna make that about a quarter inch so that uh, I still have a backing to the badge. Maybe a little bit less, maybe more like an eighth of an inch. Um, because this is just going to be a, a inset. Um, and we are going to make this slightly smaller than two by three. So I'm just clicking and dragging these toggles until I get the measurements that I want. Right now it's at about two and three quarters tall. We're gonna do two and a half tall. And one and a half or one and a half. So this uh, void is one and a half inches, one and a half inches by two and a half inches. So now if I just drag this over and try to put it on top of my shape, it disappears. just disappears because the shape is laying on top of it. Um, and if I try to put this hole on top of the shape, which if you want to put one shape on top of another, you need to use this work plane tool, drag it on top of the surface you want to use as a work plane. And it creates this second work plane on top of it. That's the orange grid right here. But if I take my shape and put it over first, it uh, disappears behind my original shape because now it's underneath it. And if I do Command X to cut that shape out of its space and Command V to paste it on top, it's pasted on top of this work plane but now I have my hole on top of my shape and it's not set inside of the shape the way I want. Um, so right now I just have a vacant space on top, um, not inside of the shape creating a hole. So what you do instead is you select both shapes by clicking and dragging. Um, this little red selector box will appear now I've selected both shapes. And you can use the tools in this corner to align and group your shapes together. So if I go over and click on this align tool, uh, these align toggles appear on my two shapes. 
So if I hit this center toggle, it centers the shape, two shapes together. And if I use this toggle right here, it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see now that um, the void, the top surface of the void and the top surface of the solid shape are lined up together. And it's a little bit difficult to see before you group the shape, but once you go back to this tool, select both of them, and use this group button to group it, now you have a shape with an inset in the uh, surface. If I scroll here, you can see that there is a little ledge. That is what grouping those two shapes together has created. Um, and I'll just change angles so you can see what I mean. So now we have our inset. And I no longer need um, this other work plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my shape, hit Command X again to copy or to cut it. Um, and if you go back to the work plane tool, um, select it and click on the work plane that you established, that second work plane disappears and we are back to our blue original work plane. So I want my shape on this work plane. I'm going to hit Command V. And now we are back to where we started with our inset sort of frame. Um, so now I wanna add text to this surface inside of my shape. Um, Tinkercad comes with a really cool text shape tool that if I click on and drag over, gives me text already made into an object. You can change what the text says by going into the properties window and selecting uh, this text type box. And I'm going to type in my name. So, hi. I'm Monica. And right now that text is way, way too big. So we are going to click on the toggles again and size it down. You can hold down shift to make sure that your uh, text doesn't get warped. I'm gonna scale this down, holding down shift as I go until I get a shape that is about about an inch long. And I'm having the same issue that I was having before, where if I try to go over and put this on top of my surface, I can't, so I need another work plane. Let me just move this back in place. I'm gonna go back to the work plane tool, set my work plane on top of this inner surface. Cut my shape. zoom in and paste my shape back on the work plane so I can drag it over here. And that's still a little big, but let me see. I'm gonna resize it down just a little bit more. And now I have my text for my badge. If I change my view, you can see that it is on the inset surface the way I wanted it to be. And our final step is to add some kind of shape or icon. You can always build your own shape using the 
preset shapes that are in um, Tinkercad already. But I had a heart on my example uh, badge. I wanted to import a shape into uh, Tinkercad so that you can customize this badge. And it also introduces you to how to import SVG files for certain designs. So if you have something like a logo that you want to turn into a 3D shape to put into your projects, uh, a really great way to do that is to import designs into the program. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself a simple design by going to nounproject.com. And if you've never used Noun Project before, it is a database of a bunch of royalty-free icons that designers use, uh, um, designers design and upload uh, so that people can use them. Uh, some are royalty-free, actually a lot of them are, uh, depending on what kind of project you're using them for, if you're using them for personal use. This is a great resource. You can search for anything in this database. I'm going to search for something fun. Let's go with a puppy. And it has lots of different icons that you can choose from. I like this guy right here. He looks really cute. Um, so we are going to click get this icon, go for the free download. And when you download a file from Noun Project, it asks you if you want to download it as an SVG or a PNG. Whenever you're working with uh, Tinkercad, you want to use SVG files. So we are going to hit SVG. It's going to let me uh, download this file. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then we are going to go back to Tinkercad, back into our project. I'm going to delete this cylinder right here. And in order to import a file, all you need to do is click on import in this upper right corner. I'm going to hit import, hit choose file, and then navigate to where I saved our SVG going to hit open and it gives you a couple options for when you import. I just want to import the artwork. Um, the scale you can uh, leave at 100% and I'm going to hit import right here. And it might take a couple minutes, but once it does, it has created a 3D object of my drawing that is way, way, way too big. So I'm going to select this object and scale it way down. Once again, just clicking on the corner and scaling it down so that it fits on our work plane. Going to zoom in so you could see a little bit better here. And I guess while I was scaling, I selected my text too and it moved it off the badge. But the good thing is, is that all of our uh, elements are on the same work plane that I want. So I'm just going to move my text. back onto my badge. And I'm gonna scale this puppy dog down a little bit more, holding down shift as I scale down. And there is a slight uh, depth to it, but I want this to be a little bit taller. So now I have a badge with my name 
and an icon that I like. Uh, we don't need this work plane anymore. So we are going to just deselect that work plane and be back on our blue work plane. I'm gonna select everything, move it to the center, and use my uh, group tool to group everything together. And once you group shapes with different colors together, it will take on the color of whatever the larger grouping is. Um, so now everything is red, everything is one file, uh, and I have my name and an icon um, on this little inset badge. The final step is to add a place to put in a ring or a lanyard, um, a little handle on the top so that uh, I can put this um, on a lanyard and wear it. So we are going to turn this shape around so that I can see it from here. And these void shapes are not just good for creating insets or creating holes in shapes, but also for dividing other shapes up. So we are going to make this really simple and choose, they're calling it a tube, this tube shape. And we are going to use, we are going to use this cube that is uh, a void and use it to cut our shape in half. How are we going to do that? So I'm just going to move to a place where you can see. I have my ring shape. And I'm going to move my uh, cube until it is about in the middle of my ring shape, stretch it out a little bit so it goes across the entire shape. And I'm going to group these two shapes together. Now, instead of a full tube, I've got half of one in this little semicircle rainbow shape. And this, I'm just going to scale down and make a little bit thinner so that we can have our uh, badge uh, holder. So I'm just gonna rotate this around. If you wanna rotate a shape, um, you just use this tool on the bottom, a rotate ring will appear. I'm going to rotate this just like that and move it till it is connecting with my bad shape. Um, but right now it is not grouped together and it's not aligned properly. So I'm going to use my selection tool by holding down my left button once again, clicking and dragging over both shapes. First, I'm gonna align it using my align toggles, which are on the other side. Oops. I'm gonna use this lower align toggle to center my two pieces, and then I'm gonna zoom in so that you can see. This shape is a little bit tall, so I'm going to use the height adjustment so that it's sitting underneath this surface a little bit. And I'm going to select both shapes again and finally group them together. And now I have a completed name badge with a holder, um, a little inset shape, an icon, and some text. These basic skills of uh, are the starting point for you to get started with your own uh, customized projects and custom models. Tinkercad is a really great program to help you with um, 
your first few models and getting the hang of navigating a 3D program. So now that our model is finished, the final step I need to show you is how to export it so that you can uh, put it on a 3D printer. So once you have your model grouped together and finished, you just go to export in the upper right corner. And it would be best to export it for 3D printing as an STL file if you're going to be printing in the studio um, at the library. But once you hit STL, you can name the project whatever you like um, and just hit save and it will export out um, to your computer and you can bring that file into Studio 300 uh, to slice and print on our machines. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, basic modeling program in Tinkercad. If you would like to see what other people have done with Tinkercad, you can always go to the main page by clicking on this icon and hitting gallery. As you can see, the sky's the limit with how complicated you can get, even though it's a very user-friendly interface. Uh, Tinkercad is a very powerful program and you can use it to make all kinds of really cool things um, to 3D print or to just model for uh, gaming, um, assets. Uh, 3D modeling is its own hobby aside from uh, 3D printing. So if you find you really like this, Tinkercad is a great free resource to get started. Once again, if you want a little bit more in-depth um, of a resource on how to use all the tools in Tinkercad, just go to resources, hit Learning Center, and go through the tutorials. Um, but you can always look at other people's projects to see how they have uh, put things together. Thank you so much for uh, coming into this class. Hopefully it was helpful and we hope to see you in the studio real soon. Thank you.